ダダダダダダダダダダダダダダ Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Oh, everywhere you look, everywhere you go, there's a heart. There's a heart. A hand to hold on to. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, there's a place of somebody who needs you. Everywhere you look, yeah. Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here to review Fuller House. So, Fuller House is the spin-off slash sequel series to the original show Full House. And you pretty much have everyone returning here with the exception of the Olsen twins, except the main focus in this series is DJ, Stephanie, and Kimmy. This season is about when Danny is selling his house because he now has a wife, he has his show in LA, Joey, Uncle Jesse, and Rebecca they're all leaving the house too so pretty much everyone's moving on with their own lives while DJ's actually gonna be at the house alone just handling the whole single mother thing alone because of her husband passing away like about a year ago so then when Stephanie and Kimmy over here DJ through the baby monitor. Stephanie and Kimmy decide to move into the house so that way the both of them can help DJ raise her kids so that way DJ does not have to be all alone raising her kids. And you know, that way DJ at least has some help. I was really excited for the show. Like, really, really excited because I am a huge fan of Full House. Full House to me is one of the funniest sitcoms of all time. It's personally just one of my favorite sitcoms of all time in general. I love Full House and Full House came around a special time with me because I remember when I just started watching Full House in middle school and it was actually thanks to my young brother that I got introduced to Full House because I never really bothered watching Full House when I flipped the channels and then I remember my younger brother just showing me the show. First time I saw the show I was instantly in love with it so I honestly have to thank my young brother for making me love the show so much and becoming a huge fan of it and I'm still a huge fan to this day. I can still watch the show. I never get tired of watching it. I love to laugh. There's even times where I can even cry during the show. I had so much fun watching Fuller House. Now, of course, there's going to be problems. There are some problems in the season, but, but I think really Fuller House just did a very successful job of giving me what I loved about Full House. Now, first of all, it is great to see the cast here. But of course the main focus is DJ Stephanie and Kimmy, along with their kids, Ramona, well Ramona is Kimmy's daughter, and then for DJ there's her sons uh, Jackson, Max, and then baby Tommy, which I guess you could basically say is the Michelle of this show. Danny lost his wife in the show, he was a single dad, and DJ's a single mom. And Kimmy and Stephanie in this show are basically um, Uncle Joey and Uncle Jesse of the original show. Yeah, too much of a coincidence there, but I mean, it's Full House slash Fuller House. What do you really expect? The first episode really is a reunion episode because you have everyone there. You have Danny, Uncle Joey, Uncle Jesse, you have Rebecca. You actually see how Nikki and Alex look when they're older. Because I've always been curious how they would look when they're older. And thanks to Fuller House, I now know. So it was interesting to see how Nikki and Alex turned out here. Which is that they didn't grow up to be that bright. And I 
I actually thought those pretty funny. They were only in the first episode of the season, however, so hopefully we'll get maybe another appearance from Nikki and Alex by next season. And then it was just cool to see the chemistry, like basically nothing's changed. Uh, you could tell that Kimmy still gets on Danny's nerves and Rebecca and Joey's like, everyone's still annoyed by Kimmy, just putting up with her. So nothing's definitely changed there. How Kimmy and Stephanie interacted with each other they're like in Full House. Yeah, nothing's changed there either. They still banter with each other the same exact way they would banter with each other in Full House. They give you the catchphrases that I'm sure us fans were expecting to hear, but they did give us catchphrases just for a nice little fan service, I guess you could say. So I really did like that so much. I loved hearing the cut it out again. I loved hearing the how rude. You know, all the catchphrases that I grew up loving from Full House. The thing I actually really respect what the show did is how self-aware they were of what the original show is. Because let's face it, the original show was very cheesy. It was very sappy. They even poked the joke about how every time they would hug each other or have a sentimental moment, they would have a violent music playing. There was even a joke at the end of episode two where Uncle Jesse's all like, oh look, the violent music's back. Like, they're pretty much breaking the fourth wall. That's something I was not expecting. There were two things about Fuller House I actually was not expecting at all. I was not expecting the break the fourth wall jokes, which were definitely, most likely, I think the funniest jokes by far. But I was not expecting the show to get so adult. Like there's a lot, and I mean a lot of adult humor in the show. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into that, but it's very interesting considering the original show's TVG, this one's TVG, but it's a lot more adult, pretty much a lot more mature than Full House. I really did like how self-aware they were of what the original show was, and how even though the Olsen twins couldn't come back to play Michelle, they still poke fun at them. Like, they would say where Michelle is in the first episode, and you had the whole crew just turn around looking at the screen like this. They would pause for a few seconds. There were just jokes like that I really liked. They do definitely poke fun at the Olsen twins a few times during the show. So it's like they acknowledge Michelle's presence, and that's nice. I'm glad they didn't ignore Michelle. The show is aware it's not the 90s. So they definitely do modernize the show. And I know everyone says, if you love Full House, you'll love Fuller House. But the thing about Fuller House is that it definitely does feel like a whole different show. Like, some of the humor did feel like classic Full House humor. And when the show did that, that was awesome. But then there's other times where they make really adult jokes. And yeah. Kimmy was someone I was a little bit worried about because when it comes to Full House... Kimmy can kind of be a hit and miss character for me. Like there's times where I think Kimmy is absolutely hysterical. Like I just find her so funny. But then there's times where I do get incredibly annoyed with Kimmy. In this case in Fuller House, there's not a single moment where Kimmy annoyed me. Kimmy was full on adorable and likable from start to finish. So in a way, I actually kind of enjoy her just a little more as an adult, even though, trust me, there's many great moments with Kimmy from the original show. So don't think I hate her. Like, even when I'm annoyed by her, I don't hate her or anything. It's just that, you know, she kind of gets on my nerves, but I like how much she's grown. Like, she's never changed. She still has her moments of not being smart, but you could tell she definitely has grown. Stephanie has definitely grown too, and then DJ, out of all of them, she's the one that probably grew the least. She's still the same DJ we know from the original show, but in a good way though. I thought Candace Cameron Bure did a great job playing DJ. I just thought she did a very nice job with the character. You know, she's already aware of what this character is at this point. Jody Sweden. Blah, blah. Yeah. How do you look so hot? Like, I'm being serious. 
This is Stephanie. Now I'm used to seeing the sweet, innocent little girl Stephanie and then to see her grow up like this, like, whoa, hot damn. I'm not the only one thinking this, you know, come on, I can't be the only one that's thinking this. Jody Sweden has aged well, that's all I'm gonna say, but her growing up to be extremely hot aside, I do think Jody Sweden was really great as Stephanie. You could definitely tell that Stephanie has changed a lot and I still really like her. Like she still has a likability of Stephanie, but she's definitely a lot more adult now. What I also really like that Fuller House did is that it actually showed us that Stephanie grew up to be a musician. She followed under the steps of Uncle Jesse because, you know, Uncle Jesse loved music. And obviously in Full House, we saw how much she looked up to Uncle Jesse. And then remember in the original show when she even started her own band with her, with her friends. So, you know, you kind of figured Stephanie would go in that path. And I find it interesting now that we're watching Fuller House, she did go into the path of being a musician. And I thought... That was really awesome, honestly. So that's one similarity I actually really like the most is the fact that Stephanie ended up being a musician just like Uncle Jesse. So not only is it awesome, but I think in a way it's actually very sweet. And of course, it's cool to get guest appearances from Danny, Uncle Joey, Uncle Jesse, Rebecca throughout the season. I like that they appear as guests. Because I know they're busy, they don't have time to probably be full series regulars like in the original show, but it's nice that they find the time to actually make guest appearances, and it's always so awesome. It just brings a great sense of pure nostalgia. Now, as for the kids in this series, when the show started, when it was the first episode, I was worried about these kids. I really was. And I wasn't sure how I feel about them for the first couple of episodes. Um, but then these kids actually grew on me. I actually start to really like these kids. Especially when it comes to Ramona and Max. Jackson, he's kind of a... He's a serviceable character. That's all I'm going to say. Jackson's a serviceable character, but... I definitely do prefer Ramona and Max over Jackson, if I have to be honest. But, you know, he's a serviceable character. He actually didn't turn out as bad as I thought he was when I watched the first episode. So, the kids, I was definitely perfectly fine with, honestly. But then, I also did really like how much this show really did acknowledge the original show. Because not only was it self-aware on how sappy and cheesy it was, but it would even give you clips from the original show. DJ and Steve, after many years later, they're not together, and Steve is still trying to find a way to win DJ's heart because obviously his love for DJ has never stopped. And there's an episode where it would show DJ and Steve from when they had their kiss, which was really wonderful, honestly. And then the first episode where did the side-by-side -side clip thing, which I think is really cool, where it shows the original versus the new. And in the first episode, before pretty much everyone left the house, leaving DJ, Kimmy, and Stephanie alone, Danny, Joey, Jesse, Stephanie, and DJ, they were all singing to Michelle in the original show, but in the new show, they were all singing a song to Tommy, and they're going around the crib. It shows a side-by-side -side clip that just made me so happy, honestly. It was just so nostalgic. This show definitely takes you on a nostalgic trip, and I know people are going to probably be bothered by it always constantly throwing references from the original show and showing these clips. Like, the nostalgia trip never stops, but honestly, I think that works for Fuller House, and I really love that Fuller House fully acknowledges that because I think adding nostalgia... But at the same time, the nostalgia actually fits for the storylines that are happening during this season. It personally does work. And then there's Kimmy's ex-husband named Fernando, in which I didn't really care for him for the first few episodes. But then as the show kept going on, I was actually really liking Fernando. I just really love how the show keeps in the spirit with the characters. The characters are exactly how I would picture them they would be when they were adults. So I definitely really like Fernando. I've grown to really like Ramona and Max, 
Jackson's a pretty serviceable character, but there could even be moments where I actually really liked him. And, you know, I think Jeff Franklin and everyone else, they knew exactly what they were doing when making this show, definitely. As I said earlier, this is not a perfect show, however. The problems I did have with Fuller House is definitely, like I said earlier, with the adult humor. There are times where the adult humor actually works, and it's really funny. But then there's other times where the adult humor just comes off as honestly pretty cringy and very awkward. And I feel like some of the adult humor is just added into the show because they have to add the humor for the adults. I mean, this is a TVG show. Like, there's nothing wrong with having adult humor because, you know, Full House, not a whole lot, but it had its moments of adding just little subtle adult humor just like very subtle this one goes like way more bigger than subtle it doesn't always work it does feel out of place and there's times where i do wish it was more kid friendly because even though there's times it is there's other times where i'm like okay this is getting like too adult heavy and that's normally not something I would complain about, but when you're watching a show that's based off of the original show, Full House, which is all about having clean and very genuine humor, you know, it just feels odd seeing that here in Fuller House. And speaking of odd, now I understand they have to change the style because it's not the 90s anymore. I get that. But the modernized humor in this show did not work either. And what I mean by that is like humor that deals with today's society, our generation. Like there's a few times where the show mentions Donald Trump. And I'm like, wait, huh? Fuller House mentions Donald Trump? Like, whoa, really? And then there would also be mentions of like Facebook. I'm just so used to seeing the style of what Full House is. Some of the stuff that I see in Fuller House, it does feel really weird to me, honestly. And I feel like whenever this show has to surround humor that deals with our times, it doesn't work. I think if it just focused on being its own humor, the humor that we know and love from Full House, I don't think it would be much of a problem. But in this case, it is a pretty big problem because I think it just tries so hard to fit in the modern times when personally, in my opinion, I don't think it really needs to. Like, yeah, there could be times where they can do it, but I think how Fuller House handles it just didn't quite work for me. There's a love triangle that I didn't think necessarily was necessary. Were there funny moments? Yeah, there were funny moments with the whole love triangle, but I do think the whole love triangle, which was the main focus in the last few episodes of the show, you know, I didn't think it was really necessary. And then the last problem I had with Fuller House personally is just that there's a couple of things that are just ignored. Like one thing, I'm not gonna spoil once again, something happens with Stephanie. It's a pretty dramatic situation with her. And those that have seen this season probably know what I'm talking about. Stephanie brings up this certain situation to DJ DJ and Stephanie have this conversation. After that, it's completely ignored. Like, they don't bring it up for the rest of the show. Like, after DJ and Stephanie have that conversation about that situation with Stephanie. But a huge problem I actually have is that Danny now has a wife. Yes, Danny has a wife. But guess what? She's only in the first episode just the first episode and she's only in there for a couple of minutes like yeah danny has a wife yet we have no idea who she is it just felt like they threw her in there they're like oh look there's danny's wife okay and she's completely forgotten the last episode of full house was michelle rides again which as an episode is a good episode, but as a finale, it was very disappointing. However, when you go from Michelle Rides Again, the last episode of Full House, all the way to our very own first show again, which is the name of the first episode of Fuller House. You know, Danny didn't have a wife then, but all of a sudden he has a wife now. 
we have no idea who she is. And then Danny makes a guest appearance later on in the season. It was in episode eight. And guess what? Not a single mention of his wife. Overall though, guys, Fuller House is a really, really good show. I actually really like Carly Rae Jemsen's take on the theme song for Full House. I know some people weren't really a big fan of it, but I think her voice actually worked. Even though, yes, I still do prefer like the original theme, I really do like what Carly Rae Jemsen did with Fuller House's version of the Full House theme. I actually really liked it. I can't wait for season two, honestly. Fuller House definitely brings the spirit of Full House, although more mature, and more modernized it does capture what Full House is all about. It does have some of the cheesy humor that I know and love. I still really care about these characters. I actually really do enjoy the kids. I really enjoy Fernando as the show was going by. It was great to see Steve here. Steve is still the same likable Steve I know from Full House. It's nice to see guest appearances from Danny, Uncle Jesse, Uncle Joey, and Rebecca. After seeing through 13 episodes of Fuller House, I can honestly say I was not disappointed by this show. I was very satisfied with it. I do view it the same way I view Girl Meets World, where the sequel series slash spin-off series isn't as good as its predecessor, but for the show that it is, it's a really good one. And I'm going to give Fuller House Season 1 a 7.5 out of 10. And on a letter grade, Fuller House would get a B. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think of Fuller House. If you are a fan of Full House, how did Fuller House go for you? Was it everything you wanted as a Full House fan, or did Fuller House completely disappoint you as a Full House fan? Let me know whatever opinion you have in the comments down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!